Hello, and welcome to ETCV 511, Learning Technologies in the Digital Age. My name is Chris Johnson, and I'm your instructor for this course. This is the first of two videos designed to introduce you to the course. In this video, I'll walk you through the purpose of the course in each of the projects. In the second video, I'll introduce you to D2L, our new course management system. So let's take a look at the course. ETCV 511 is designed to introduce you to a series of fundamental digital learning tools. During the various projects, you'll learn the mechanics of how to use these tools in your teaching or training. But more importantly, we'll look at the when, where, and how you would use these digital tools to enhance learning. The course is divided into eight major projects with a final reflection at the end. Let's take a look at each of the projects. The first project is class participation. This project has three components. The first is providing some introductory material. The second is participating in class discussions. And the third is participating in a series of online meetings. For your introduction, you'll post the following information into the introductions forum. Along with this information, you might consider posting a picture of yourself as well so that your colleagues can see what you look like. Next, you'll complete this form to provide me with some basic contact information. Since your UANet ID contains your official name, if you have a preferred name, like myself, I prefer to go by Chris rather than Christopher, you'll put that in the preferred first and last name, and then fill out the rest of the information. Throughout the semester, we'll have a series of discussions. Some of these discussions are the ways that I will ask you to turn in the product of your project, and others are there to provide you with a place where you can ask your colleagues questions. So make sure that you participate fully in each of the discussions. I have certain expectations into how we'll perform in each of these discussions, and you can find that information in the netiquette section of the course information. The final component of class participation will be a series of three meetings held at the beginning, middle, and end of the semester. The dates will be posted in the course calendar and I'll be sending out remindings of the meetings. I use these meetings to clarify questions or address any issues that come up during the course. And sometimes I'd just like to provide some additional information to the individual projects. You can participate in the meetings in one of two ways. My preferred way is that you're able to attend the live meeting. However, I know that that is not always possible. So the second option is for you to listen to a recording of the meeting and post a summary of the topics discussed, plus any questions that you have that were not answered. To attend the meetings, you'll select the UA Tools option in the upper menu, and then select Adobe Connect. You'll briefly see a loading LTI application screen, and then you'll go to the menu that you see at the bottom of the screen. There are four options here. First, to join the meeting, simply click on the Join button. If you are using option two, or you went to the meeting and would like to hear a recording, click on Recordings. I don't currently have any office hours set, so there is no meeting appearing here. But if you would like to meet with me online in Connect, versus the various other ways that I can connect online, Google Hangouts, Skypes, whatever, I can set up an office hour. Your fourth option is you can create meetings yourself. So for example, if you're working on a project and you want to work with a colleague, that's fine with me. You can set up a meeting room and use Adobe Connect to share screens and talk. The next project is the I've Been Thinking project. And this is one of my favorite ways to have discussions because I found in the past the topics have been so fascinating. In this project, you will serve as a moderator of an online discussion for a week. You'll find resources on how to create a discussion prompt and how to lead an online discussion in the steps to completion portion of this project. The main issue is to make sure that you keep up on your posts. You'll want to check your posting every day of the week that you are responsible. To keep the discussion going, you'll want to reply to the various responses from your colleagues, and you might find that their postings lead you to think of something else so you might want to take the conversation in a different way, and that's fine. If you're not a moderator, you are expected to be a discussant in the discussion forum. So every week, you'll want to make sure that you check the prompt for that week and make a response, hopefully within two days. 
if you do get behind and make a post to a discussion after the week is over, you might want to contact that moderator just to let them know that you've added something to the discussion and they can go back and perhaps respond. As the moderator, you will post your prompt on Monday by 9 a.m. of the week that you're responsible for. Once I have the full class roster, I'll be populating this little table with your name and week. Now I do this randomly, so if I happen to assign you a week that you know you're going to be swamped, you might want to contact me. I found I can usually accommodate you and move you to another week. Also, once we get into full swing, I'll be using this little chart to track your postings. This will make more sense once I actually have everybody's name and can populate these tables. Once you've posted your introductions and looked over the I've Been Thinking assignment, you'll want to start on a first major project, which is concept mapping. Concept mapping is a way to graphically illustrate your students or your own thinking, and I found it to be a powerful tool in helping me as a visual learner both to map out my understanding of the concepts that I'm studying and also as a way to assess my own learning. In this project, you'll be creating a concept map, not a mind map. Now, what's the difference? This is an example of a concept map using CMAP, the tool that you'll be using to create your concept map. It starts with a main concept with subconcepts and connecting lines. Now, here's where a concept map differs from a mind map. A mind map shows the general relationship of the concepts. In a concept map, you use connecting words and the directions of the arrows to indicate how the various concepts are interrelated with each other. So a concept map can be used to go to a greater depth than a mind map. However, I find a mind map is a really good way to just get ideas quickly out on the paper sorry, I'm that old, let's say on the computer. So you can use CMAP without all the connecting words and create a mind map. But for this project, you're gonna show me the relationships through the connecting words. The next project looks at social bookmarking. Now, social bookmarking is a powerful way for you to collect and organize resources, but more importantly, share those resources with others. So let's look at my social bookmarking site. So here we are at my Delicious web page. Now unfortunately Delicious does come with advertisements and that strange picture on the left, so we'll ignore that. I'm going to scroll down a little bit to some of my past postings. Here's one, the Center for Association Leadership. I bookmarked this back in April of 2011 and 136 other people have also bookmarked this site. They use the tags Leadership, nonprofit, resources, and association. So I can go back and search my tags and see what else I've tagged as nonprofit. So here are my three nonprofit resources. So in this project, you'll use a tool called Delicious or Digo to collect up to 10 links. And then make sure you check out the requirement in terms of what each link must have. After you've learned a bit about social bookmarking, you'll look at a series of tools that are currently very prevalent in today's classrooms. After you've read through the resources I've provided, you'll pick one of these four questions to reflect on. You'll post your reflection and then comment on at least two other colleagues' postings. Now you can do it on the tools that I've included or any digital tool that you find exciting. After you've explored those digital tools, you'll start to begin to create a digital self. This project, like others, has multiple components. The first is you'll use one of these three website creation tools to create a professional website. I'll ask you to include the following information. Now, if you already have a professional website, that's fine. You don't need to build another one. Just make sure it has the information that I'm asking for and follow the directions on how to post your website. The second component of this project is to create an account on the social networking site, LinkedIn. Now, LinkedIn is similar to Facebook, but is more professional in nature. And as you'll see, I'll ask you to join the Educational Technology Student Group in LinkedIn, as this is a very nice way we can keep in touch with you once you've graduated. Finally, you'll explore Twitter. Now, to be honest, 
Twitter is one of the social media tools that you'll either hate or you'll love. And if you hate it, that's fine. Just tell me that in your reflection. But I will ask you to create a Twitter account, follow several people on Twitter, and I have suggestions if you don't find one just by searching Twitter. And I'll also ask you to post a few tweets yourself. Once you have begun to create your digital self, you'll explore blogging. Now, blogging is an excellent reflective tool, both for you as an educator and also for your students. Now, this is another assignment where I find that people already have blogs that they've created. And again, you don't need to create a blog just for this class. Just make sure that you review my criteria for a blog and that your blog meets this criteria. Your final major product is creating a digital story. Usually this is done as a video, but I am open to other alternatives. Digital story is a very powerful tool in allowing students to reflect on their learning and to tell their story. So in this project, I'm going to let you select the topic of your digital story. It does not have to be related to educational technology. Once you're done with the course, I'll ask you to do a final reflection that is due two days after the last day of class. In your reflection, I'll ask you to reflect on these six questions. And you'll notice the question four has six subsections, but you can answer question four as just one paragraph. Your reflection doesn't have to be long, but it is a very useful tool for me as a final determinant as to what you've learned in the class and how well I have done in creating the environment for you to learn about digital tools. The reflection is worth 10 points and you get 10 points just for submitting a reflection. I do not look at them until after the course is over. So this is the end of the overview of the course. Make sure that you select the Begin the Course Here button to work through the course information. And I'll ask you to do this the first week of class. You should have read through all of the course information by, let's say, Wednesday. Also, please make sure that you watch the second video that walks you through D2L as it has a number of different features from Moodle if you've taken courses from the program before. So I look forward to working with you in 5.11 and seeing what you come up with with all your projects.